we are back. We are here with the one and only Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. And uh, he is not only a trader, but he's also a real estate, very successful investor. Jeremy, and right now I want to talk about real estate. I know that you are passionate about real estate. I know that you have been very successful on real estate and you have raised thousands of money in real estate and have gotten into several many projects in real estate so i want to share about your journey in real estate i want you to tell us about real estate what's your inspiration how you got started and what makes you um think about real estate and wanting to have assets also in real estate adriana it all started from me playing monopoly with my parents when i was like seven or eight i loved that game so much and you know what I won pretty frequently. <laughs> and by frequently, I mean every single time. I'm unbeaten in Monopoly because I would always buy real estate and people would always end up paying me rent. And then I would always end up buying the from houses to hotels, right? Playing the game Monopoly. And that's really when it started sinking in. This is a path to wealth because you're playing with money. Even though it's fake money, you're still playing with it. You're touching it. I'm seeing all these $100 and $500 bills. And from a kid who is so poor, just like you growing up, right? Starting from nothing, going to something. It was a reminder to me that it's easy. It's accessible for other people in the world to become wealthy. And then real estate was definitely a way to do it. And then in my 20s, I started playing a game called cash flow. And cash flow was a blend of monopoly and budgeting and life. And, you know, it's a really great game presented by and created by Robert Kiyosaki, the, uh, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I played that game as well, and it was a perfect blend of stocks and real estate. And so it just helped me realize that this is a path to wealth. And I love real estate because it's been around forever. Everyone understands it. Everyone gets it for the most part. The biggest hurdle that most people have of real estate is money. So I was like, hey, I think I can solve people's money problems with real estate by stocks because stocks make it easy to invest in real estate make some money in stocks, grow it, take that money, go buy some real estate, and then slowly compound that over time. Great. Those are great examples, Jeremy. I love how you use the, I mean, I mean, it's your real life story. Like you learn through uh, Monopoly and, and cash flow, but it's so inspirational for our viewers that have children. Have your children play Monopoly and cash flow, you know, and they will understand the concept of money more. I play Monopoly all of my childhood. So maybe now, finally, now that you say that, it kind of makes sense that, it makes sense on my mind to start um, building an empire of real estate. And so give us some of the examples of some of the key factors that you look for when you are doing a real estate investment. And what is, what is it that you consider when you are looking into an investment for real estate, either residential or commercial? Fantastic question. So for me, I'm a little bit unique when it comes to real estate. And, and the reason is I only invest in what I absolutely love and would use and would enjoy. So if I wouldn't live there, interact there, be there, I don't personally invest in it. So that, that just simply means that I generally stay away from, and I have no investments right now at all in mobile home parks, um, let's say section, out, section eight housing, uh, apartment complexes. I don't currently have any investment in a, an apartment complex. Just because right now I would not live in an apartment complex for no particular reason. There's nothing negative. It's just that's not where my life is and that's not what I'm focusing on. But what I would do and what I am doing and what I have done is Airbnb, right? So when I travel places, I like to stay in Airbnbs or hotels. So I would love to own Airbnbs and hotels. I also, when I travel, I have an RV and I stay in RV parks. So that's actually one of my primary focuses right now is RV park investing because I understand it. I would stay in an RV park. I get it. I have an RV park. I get the lifestyle. I get the whole je ne sais quoi of RVs. I truly enjoy them. And so with that being said, I will invest into RV parks. So one of my biggest rules for investing is do I understand it? Would I do it? Would I live there? Would I be there? If I can answer all those questions with a yes, then that's an avenue that I will focus my investing on. That's awesome, Jeremy. I kind of see the similarity of your um, mindset, how um, I also know that you invest in stocks that you yes. consume or that you wear, 
So I see how you apply that also into real estate and it's, it's fantastic, right? Because you're a great believer of that. You're a believer of that product, you're a consumer, you're a user. So um, you're basically just walking the talk. So I like that. I like that approach a lot and I respect that. And also what about real estate markets? Any real estate markets that you are particularly interested in and, or that you um, consider? Yep. So real estate markets, let's just say from a uh, holistic standpoint, if the location has a D1 college, so division one college, that's a big check mark for me, right? Division one colleges, I, I do not personally believe will ever go away. They've been around for hundreds of years and they always have a flood of students coming in. So I grew up not far from you, Adriana, in Gainesville, Florida. So I lived there from 2000 to 2012. And that was actually my first property that I ever bought was a small condo in Gainesville, Florida for $60,000. Uh, it was my first time home buyer. So I did a FHA. I bought it for like 3% down. So I was able to rent that out after I moved out uh, two or three years later. I moved out of that and I kept that property for a while and rented it out. So Gainesville, Florida, believe it or not, it's actually a really nice market to invest in because it's one of the best colleges in the nation. It's the top 10. Warrington College of Business is where I went to my business school. It's uh, very affordable, right? Everyone loves the state of Florida. The only downside of Florida is hurricanes. But what's cool about Gainesville is it's centrally located, right? It's right in the middle. And it's not Miami or Orlando, which is extremely, in my opinion, they're a little bit higher priced per square foot. Right. You could probably get a home in Gainesville, Florida for somewhere between 200 to $300 a square foot. So Gainesville, Florida looks really, really unique and interesting right now. Obviously, Nashville, Tennessee is a very, very hot places around Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I currently live. Other cities I've heard and, and I've experienced are going absolutely bananas. Our Las Vegas is coming back in a really big way. Oklahoma City, Des Moines, Iowa, Boise, Idaho. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. South Dakota is becoming a rampage place for people to go travel. Even though, yes, it gets very, very cold in the winter, it's extremely gorgeous in the summer and the spring and the fall. So there's a tons of places. But the question is, like, if you are investing in real estate, if you're watching and listening to this and you're extremely interested in investing in real estate, where is a market that you know extremely well because you've been there, you visited there, you love going back there? You would spend time there. You would take your family there. You know the ins and outs, the best restaurants. Because if you know all of those things, you are going to be much more fine-tuned to truly invest in places like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with uh, tertiary markets now uh, being much more um, attractive than being in Miami or being in Orlando or, like you say, Nashville, but cities that are smaller and have much more room for growth. Um, as, you know, as all of these main main cities are just getting populated and populated after COVID. So Nashville, I know you live in Nashville and Nashville has experienced a great growth and I'm so excited you know, for that growth that has happened in your city. Um, so yeah, tertiary markets, I totally, I totally support that as well. And yeah, for our listeners, tertiary markets, it's always good to look at another city that is not um, one of the main cities in your state. Um, what about financing, Jeremy? Any any advice that you can give about financing based on your experience or that you can share on that? Yes, financing is uh, is wonderful. One of the, when we're talking about financing, I think if people understand that you can use the stock market in ways that you would not have expected to finance deals. And here's what I mean. Your mom, your dad, your brother, sisters, cousins, friends, family, employees, employers, bosses, People that are around you, they probably have a 401k or a retirement account. So for those listening, this is a very, very important piece. You can use retirement accounts to invest into real estate. And you can do that tax-free and penalty-free. So let's say your grandmother right, has a $700,000 IRA that's sitting there and she's living off of that. Could you use $50,000 or $100,000 of that through a custodial self-directed IRA Take that and use some of her cash and some of your cousin's cash and your brother and your sister that's in an, a retirement account in the stock market and use that for real estate. And the answer is absolutely, you can. And that is a huge glitch in the matrix because if you realize that there's $40 trillion, some ridiculously huge number like that, of retirement accounts in the, here in the US that's just sitting there unused and untapped that people could access, 
that provides so much opportunity because then you might not even have to finance a deal. I'm about to buy an RV park, Adriana, uh, in cash. All because I have four or five buddies who want to put some cash in. We're going to buy it in cash. We don't have to worry about the interest rates. Interest rates can do whatever they want. We're going to own this deal outright and we're just going to enjoy the cash flow. And then three years from now, when the interest rates go down, we're going to finance it, get 50% of our money back to us. And then the deal is still going to cash flow. And then we go take that money and we go do something else. I've learned all this through YouTube. I've learned all this through books. Everything that you want to learn about real estate is about being exactly what you're doing right now. Listening to podcasts like this with Adriana, who has made tens of millions of dollars in real estate profits in her life. But she learned it the exact same way we're learning it now. Podcasts, books, shows, seminars, webinars, classes. Invest in yourself. Spend time, spend energy, spend money to learn how to finance deals and to invest in real estate and stocks. Thank you, Jeremy, for that. Yeah, I have, we typically don't talk about uh, using um, 401k for, for financing, but that's so true that that's something that most people don't even consider. And then most people are just probably relying on down payment assistance or savings. And then their dream of home ownership is basically capped by just those sources. But when you when you explore and then when you amplify that by by looking at other other sources such as 401k, um, or other kind of um, investments that somebody may have. So that, that changes possibilities for everybody and it changes uh, the mindset and the way of looking at things. Um, I remember you saying about Jacksonville. So yeah, I also, like, like you said, I also went to Orlando School, UCF. So, but we're not gonna pick a fight about the Knights or the, <laughs> or the Gators because I'm sure that one is already lost. Uh, but thank you so much again for bringing all of those new ways of thinking into us. And like you said, uh, by watching shows, by studying, uh, by being always curious. Curious is such a great attribute to have for you to be successful in any area of your life. So as we talk about all of that, um, another another subject that I wanted to uh, to discuss with you, Jeremy, is about misconceptions in real estate. What are some of the misconceptions that you encounter yourself in your real estate career, investment career? And what, what are some of the ones that you have been able to get rid of? The biggest misconception, Adrian, about real estate that I've overcome and I've helped other people overcome is you have to be extremely rich and extremely wealthy now to invest in real estate. I don't believe many people listening to this podcast were more broke than I once was. Never let someone tell you that money doesn't buy happiness because it does. They just haven't been broke enough. Every dollar I get, I get happier. So the biggest misconception, you do not have to have tons of money to begin to do this. You have to have knowledge, study, learn, get your information, get your direction and awareness correct and begin investing as soon as you possibly can. Thank you, Jeremy. As you said, that nobody was as broke as you are. I also want to mention that Jeremy Alexander Newsom, along with a very successful real estate investor, um, a lady, um, woman friend of mine, Brittany Turner, uh, they have their own podcast, Broke to Walk, which you can also uh, subscribe to and listen to. So we'll be putting the information about this podcast as well here. You're right. You don't have to be rich. And I'm a great example of that. Like you don't have to be rich to be able to be successful and, and build uh, wealth through wealth, through real estate. So you have been so inspiring to us, so inspiring to us in the area of trading, in the area of real estate, in the area of fitness that we didn't even talk about doing 10,000 push-ups a day. I cannot even imagine doing that. And we didn't, didn't even talk about your career and career. No, you're uh, calling us a, as a healer of souls along with your wife. Esbelana Newsom as a healer of souls, both of you together, beautiful couple that I admire so much and have the privilege and honor to have as friends. So as we close this show, Jeremy, uh, thank you for again for sharing all of your awesomeness and the wonderful things that you're doing in the world. If you want to share uh, some last words of wisdom or if you want to share about how people can reach out to you as well, how they can see this opportunity on trading or just pick your brain and listen to your podcast as well, please give it to us all. <laughs> Thank you so much, dear. You're, you're the best. Best way to reach out to me, find me on social media. I have a really great social media team, whatever social media you prefer, I'm there. Reach out to me and we can easily schedule a, a conversation and, and time to chat. I can help you with whatever your goals are. My final discussion and final topic and my 
final thoughts on this. Number one, you're amazing. You are incredible. You're such a light and such a beautiful person. And it's amazing to have you in my life. And number two, for everyone who's listening, please begin your investing journey as soon as you can. Every single person needs to become financially free so that we can go give back to others. One of my biggest missions in life is taking the top 1% of the world and turning it to the top 2%. That change, though, will send ripples through the generations. And I need every single person listening to be a part of that generational shift and change. Thank you, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. And now we know that money grows on trees and we know what a naked trader is. So thank you so much again. I look forward to everybody reaching out to you and listening to your podcast as well. You have listened to the Adriana Montes Real Estate Show. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, please make sure that you follow us on our social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's been a pleasure being today with Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and thank you so much.